Welcome to your macromolecule video notes. So these notes, we've discussed macromolecules briefly in class, but they're going to get into a lot more of the structure and a more specific function of each of the macromolecules. So first up, let's just talk about it. So organic chemistry is the term used to refer to the macromolecules. So why is it different than the regular chemistry that we've been doing? The reason is organic chemistry is about carbon. So what makes carbon so special? Well, first of all, carbon can be in three major shapes. So it can be straight, it can be a branched molecule, or it can form rings. Macromolecules are the term we use for lipids, proteins, fats, and nucleic acids, but let's talk about a micromolecule versus a macromolecule. So macro, meaning big, so macromolecules are giant molecules. They're made up of hundreds or thousands of smaller units called monomers. And if you remember, monomers link together to form polymers. So a polymer is a macromolecule. So let's look at it broken down a little more. So if you combine carbon with carbon, you get a carbon molecule. If you combine two carbon molecules, you get a carbon macromolecule, which is monomers. And then remember that polymers are just repeating units of identical compounds, such as many, many carbon monomers. So to put it all together, an atom is smaller than a monomer, a monomer is smaller than a polymer, and technically a polymer is smaller than a macromolecule because a polymer is just a smaller version of a macromolecule. Just remember, macromolecules are huge. They are the biggest things. If we look at this picture down here, you'll see that all the little dots are monomers, and all together is a polymer. So a little bit more about polymers. So like we said, they're smaller compounds, and here's a key term you need to know is dehydration synthesis. So if you think about it, dehydration, hydration, water. So dehydration is the loss of water, but synthesis is when you're putting it together. So what this means is that when the smaller units are put together to form larger units, water is lost or removed. Another term you need to know is hydrolysis. So hydro, once again meaning water, but this time water is created. So it's added to the bond, and what that does is it breaks it down, so the water molecule splits and joins the bond. And this is actually how your digestion process works. So we've talked briefly about water and why it's so important, but if you don't have enough water in your body, you're going to have trouble with your digestion because water's added to break down these macromolecules. So types of macromolecules. We've done this over and over and over. There are four. You need to know these. Carbohydrates lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And honestly, the majority of this video is going to be spent on the first three. Nucleic acids, DNA, essentially, is not everything. It's in everything you eat. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. We do a whole unit on DNA later. So why carbon in the first place? Well, it has four valence electrons, and it forms four very stable covalent bonds with other atoms. It's also the backbone for living things. So carbon is essential to anything that's living. So first up, carbohydrates. And this part should be reviewed. So if you remember, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are the three major elements in carbohydrates, and they're a major source of energy. Two major types, sugars and starches. Now there's different types of carbohydrates. So there's something called a monosaccharide. Mono, meaning one, and saccharide, meaning a sugar. So these sugars actually go through oxidation reduction reactions, and this is cell respiration and photosynthesis, which is a very common process if you're an animal or a plant. And common sugars that are monosaccharides are things like glucose, fructose, galactose. These are all things you've heard, you see them on food labels all the time. So examples, fruits, vegetables, and honey, that's where all of your simple sugars are going to be. And if you see down here, there's a picture and those are in that ring formation that we've talked about that carbon can make. Disaccharides, di meaning two. So these are some other common sugars, especially lactose, that's what's in milk, sucrose, maltose. So foods that include these are wheat, rye, onion, and broccoli. And if you look here, you'll once again see that it's a double sugar or a double ring sugar. So you see the two glucose, and fructose, those two combined make sucrose. The next one is a polysaccharide. So a polysaccharide is poly meaning many, 
And these are some other common sugars, so starch, cellulose, glycogen. So these are your heavier kind of carbs, so your rice, your pasta, your potatoes. If people are doing something like carb loading before a major race or a swim meet or something like that, they're going to eat pasta or rice or potatoes because those sugars last longer and they take longer to break down by your body. So let's just review. So remember, monosaccharide is, is single, disaccharide is two, and then poly is many. So lipids. There are also two main groups of lipids, and I'm not referring to the types of fats that we talked about. So by this, I mean an open chain compound or a fused ring. And we really won't get into steroids very much, but the fused ring compounds are steroids and lipids. But most of the lipids we're going to talk about are going to look like this over here. They're going to be in chains. So lipids are made of fatty acids. So the fatty acids in general are the building block. And lipids store energy. So a lot of times we eat too much in terms of lipids. So that's why people put on weight because that's too much of it stored. But it's also insulation and protection. You need some fat in areas to protect your really important organs in your body. And there's a fatty acid structure. So there's a head, which is the carboxyl group, and then there's tails. And there can be one, two, or three tails on a fatty acid structure. And it's really important to note these words, polar, <coughs> excuse me, and nonpolar. So polar meaning water loving, nonpolar meaning water fearing. And we'll get into this much more when we talk about the cell membrane. So some more information about fatty acids. So saturated versus unsaturated. So saturated fats are fats that you don't want to eat a lot of. They're usually solid at room temperature, and these are things like animal fats. If you've ever looked at a piece of bacon, I'm sure you've seen the fat that's on the bacon. Unsaturated fats are usually plant-based, and by unsaturated, it's referring to the fact that there's at least one double bond, and these are usually liquid. Now let's take a minute, look at this picture here. If I were you, I would pause the video here and I would sketch both of these things just so that way you have an idea of what each one looks like in terms of structure. So if you see a saturated fatty acid, you'll notice that it has the maximum number of hydrogen bonds, which means there's tons of hydrogen. Look at all those hydrogen. And there's no double bonds between the carbons. This picture looks a lot different because you have a double bond here, a double bond here, and another one here. So all those double bonds put little bends in the chain. So what that means is that if hydrogen is added, it can break those double bonds and cause a different type of fat. And we'll get into that in a minute. So fatty acids in your food. So in terms of unsaturated, there's also different types of unsaturated. So there's monounsaturated and poly. Once again, those prefixes are so important. So mono meaning one. So a monounsaturated fat just has one double bond, while a poly has more than one. So monounsaturated fat are typically your oils. These also contain something called omega-9s. So that's an avocado, nuts, poultry. Your polyunsaturated fats are the healthiest fats for you. So these are omega-3s or DHA, if you've heard of those. Those are super important to your body. So fish, nuts, for example, are great sources of polyunsaturated fat. And omega-6s are down here too, but we actually get plenty of omega-6s in our diet, so that's not really something you need to worry about, but omega-9 and omega-3 is important. And then if you just look over here, and we'll spend some time with food labels, but you see total fat, saturated fat, polyunsaturated, and monounsaturated. So something else you may see on food labels is trans fats, or you may see food labels that just advertise simply no trans fat. What this means is that a trans fat is an unsaturated fat, so they take a healthy fat, and they hydrogenate it to produce trans double bonds. Now, hydrogenating, add hydrogen, but fats usually exist in a cis double bond. So let's look over here at this picture. So cis double bond, you'll see a little bit of a bend in the chain, whereas a trans double bond is still a straight chain, and that's not really normal for fat. So that's where the issues come in because our body isn't used to that. So trans fats are usually in cake and cookies and crackers, and that's usually also what makes your stuff more crunchy. So if you're eating something crunchy or like Chips Ahoy cookies or something like that, there's probably some trans fat in there. Now, 
another thing that's recently come into the news and has been popular to discuss is hydrogenated. So there's something called fully hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated. So fully hydrogenated is they add hydrogen to all the double bonds. So basically they're turning an unsaturated fat into a saturated fat. Partially hydrogenated is worse because this only adds hydrogen to some of the double bonds. So now you're getting this effect over here. So partially hydrogenating is essentially making a type of trans fat. And the purpose of this is to create foods that are solid at room temperature but melt easily during cooking and baking, such as margarine. And actually for years, margarine was thought to be better for you, but recent studies have shown that butter is actually better because butter is more natural. Margarine is kind of produced on its own. So proteins. So we've gone over this in terms of proteins. Amino acids are very important here. And there's a large variety and proteins do have different shapes. Now, they're also made, like I said, of amino acids, and there's four major groups of amino acids. We will deal with this much more later, but you need to be relatively familiar with these four groups. So group one has nonpolar side chains. Group two has polar, but they're uncharged side chains. Group three has a carboxyl side chain, or it's acidic. And then group four are basic side chains. So here's just a quick guide to the 20 common amino acids. And it shows you they're all kind of color coded if you look up here at the key. Also something called essential amino acids and non-essential, we will spend some time in that, on that in class. So we'll discuss that a little bit further. And finally, nucleic acids. So like I said, we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about these, it's very simple. You just need to know that they're DNA and RNA. But really, really, really important is they are made of nucleotides. You must know, sorry about my drawing, you must know what's in a nucleotide. So make sure you highlight that, put a big star by it, draw attention to the fact that a nucleotide is a sugar plus a phosphate plus a nitrogen base. So that's what makes up nucleic acids. And that's all.